What's up guys, my name's Brandon and Apple just released macOS Sequoia 15.1 and in this video we're going to talk about everything that's new in the software including the new Apple intelligence features. Okay so let's get right to it, let's talk about the new features here in macOS Sequoia 15.1 and we're going to talk about Apple intelligence first. So after you install this update you will see in your settings there's a brand new section called Apple intelligence in Siri. Now if you do not see a toggle right here a kill switch to turn this on or off you might see a wait list and the wait list should not take very long it could be as little as a few minutes or as long as a few hours now if you take a look up in your status bar you'll see that we have a brand new icon for Siri so we no longer have the Siri icon up there that is the new Apple intelligence icon and when you click on that you'll notice that we have a new interface here along with the icon right here that's new and it also says type to Siri with a little glowing animation but you probably do not want to go all the way up to the status bar and click on that icon every single time to activate Siri. And that's why right here in the settings, we have a section for keyboard shortcut. So you can leave this as the default or you have some recommendations right here as well. And then we also have customize where you can set your own keyboard shortcut. So I did control S, but if you go to customize, you can change that. So maybe I want it to be command S for example, and there we go. Now, when I press command S on my keyboard, it will pull up Siri. I press it again, it dismisses it. Now you do also have listen for right here. So you can have your Mac listen for Siri as well if you want that selected. But I feel like the type to Siri now makes it a lot more accessible and easy to activate Siri. Now, if I start typing something, you'll notice that we get these suggestions underneath that update in real time as you continue to to type and you'll notice with every letter change this changes so if I want to say tell me a story for example I could also use my arrow keys on my keyboard to go down and select these and just press return on tell me a joke and it will tell me a joke right here now also with this type to Siri interface you can actually drag this throughout your desktop so you can drag this and move it anywhere you would like and you'll see that an X now appears once you move this on your desktop but as far as the actual response that you get from Siri, they are slightly better here with macOS Sequoia 15.1. Like Siri has improved a bit, especially when it comes to maintaining context between queries, but this is not the full Siri 2.0 just yet. So don't expect major changes until that comes at some point next year. But we can try this out. So how fast can a car go? What about distance? Where can I find one for sale nearby? So Siri is a little bit better and more consistent when it comes to maintaining context. And if you have your Siri responses turned on, like I have these turned off, but if you have these turned on, you will also notice that Siri has a more natural and more expressive voice. It's not as robotic as it has been in the past. But helping wasn't part of Anansi's plan. I'd love to, Anansi said, but I have to do um other things tell you what i'll tie my web to the pot in and siri will also follow along if you misspeak or if you change what you're saying mid-sentence so if i say how do i cook actually what's the distance to chicago and just like on iOS and iPadOS, Siri also now has Apple's product knowledge and support base for answering device specific questions. So if I put in, how do I connect to a mouse? It will answer that for me right here without sending me to the web. And you can see it will reference the macOS user guide down here at the bottom. Now we also get notification summaries on macOS Sequoia 15.1, just like we have on iOS and iPadOS 18.1. And you'll also notice that in some of our applications like mail and mail, messages everything is summarized so for example you can see in mail right here all of my emails have been summarized and it shows it in line and the same goes for messages as well so it's not as polished as it is in iOS 18.1 but you will notice that we have these summarized messages and if you go into your settings and go to notifications you'll notice that we have a summarize previews section and if you go into that you will see that we have summarized notification previews from so first off you do have a kill switch to turn this off entirely if you would like to but you can have notification previews not just from applications but also from specific websites that you've allowed to send you push notifications on your Mac so Apple newsroom for example 
bring a trailer.com for example when i get those push alerts up here in my notification center those are also now summarized and since we have mail opened up let's talk a little bit more about the mail application and the apple intelligence feature so first off you'll notice that we do have the priority inbox right here so we have the priority section that will basically look for messages that are time sensitive and potentially important and it will have those right here in its own section up top as long as they are unread and when i do read that message you'll notice that that section will disappear and then if you go into an email and maybe you don't have time to read this entire email well now at the very top we have a summarize button and when you click on that it will give you a brief summary of what was included in that email but my favorite feature is smart reply so we have an email here that asks if i want a new iphone 16 or a pixel phone and if it's okay to ship it out asap so if we go to reply to that check this out apple intelligence will automatically be able to read that and give me some smart reply suggestions here so maybe if i don't need that case asap i could just select no not asap and check this out so it says thanks for reaching out i'm in no rush to receive the phone please ship it out when you're ready now notice how it did not answer the first question of if i want an iphone 16 or a pixel phone so check this out it prompts me to say which phone do you want it's able to read that and understand the context and now if i go to don't answer i can select either the iphone 16 or the pixel phone or if i want to have something else i can choose other and i can put in a different phone so if i just say ipad mini and then hit return i have ipad mini selected and and it will rewrite that and say i'd like an ipad mini instead and this dialog box will stay up so you can continue to change that if you want to so if i go to iphone 16 for example it will automatically change that to iphone 16. okay so now let's talk about writing tools because this is a feature that's going to help you write better while on mac os so this works in any application whether that be in safari and google chrome and the notes application messages mail wherever so let me show you what i mean so if we select this text right here you can see that we do have a writing tools icon right here to access the menu right up in the toolbar in notes but you could also access this anywhere else on mac os and any application by right clicking when you have text selected and then go down and you'll see we have writing tools and from here you can either show the writing tools panel or if you know exactly what you want you can choose that right here so i'll just go to show writing tools so you can see the interface and let's start with the reason i don't even need grammarly anymore and that is proofread so if we click on proofread it's going to go through my text and tell me what needs to be changed and it will actually change it automatically so you'll notice that what's been changed is now underlined with this purple and pink line so it shows we have four changes and you can also get details on what those changes are if you just click on the arrow right here so it shows for thinking missing punctuation was the issue if we go over we have one for missing punctuation again and then we have pronoun so it was changed from you to obviously writing out you the correct way and then lastly we have a punctuation issue so it went ahead and fixed all of those and it did tell us exactly why that was wrong and you could also if you want to undo the change that was made you can just click on this little back arrow there and it will revert back to the original and you could also click right here to see the original and then see the fixed version and that proofread tool is something I use every single week when I'm writing the Apple Den newsletter. It really helps me out and catches some mistakes that I didn't even know I made. And then next to proofread, we have rewrite. And this one's pretty straightforward. It will just rewrite what you're saying while keeping the same tone and basically the same content as well. So it doesn't really change too much in my experience. That's why I prefer to use one of these below it. So you can choose to rewrite this text in a friendly manner and a professional tone or make Make it more concise if you want to you know shorten this a little bit so for friendly for example i'll type out something kind of mean okay so let's say we're writing an email to somebody and it might not have the best tone to it, it might come across as pretty rude and judgmental so if we select that text now and you can see that we do have an apple intelligence icon that pops up right here if you click on that it will pull up the menu and let's make this more friendly so that is the original which is not very nice and here is the friendly version of that same text that apple intelligence was able to create now if you don't like the result you can always go right here to rewrite it so if we click on this it will rewrite that text using that same friendly tone just a little bit different than what it showed previously and you can continue to do that and you can also go back to see
see the previous versions. And of course, if you don't like any of them, you could always just click on revert and it will revert back to the original. And then for the professional tone, let's say we're in LinkedIn and we're writing a message to somebody seeing if they are hiring. And maybe we don't know how to type in the most professional way. So if we select that text right here and then right click and go to writing tools, and then we're, we know what we want. So we're just gonna go down to make professional. Now, when we do that, you'll notice that it will make that text sound more professional. It does not replace it because we're inside of Safari here, but we do have an option to replace or copy. So you can see my original message was, hey man, are you still hiring? I really need a job, but no experience. You know what I mean? I need money. And the professional version was, hello, are you still accepting applications? I am seeking employment and I'm eager to gain experience and so on. So obviously you might want to tweak that around a little bit, but I found that these writing tools really give you a good idea as to the direction of the text. So if we want to replace that, we can just click on replace and there we go. It's put in there in that LinkedIn DM. And then we have concise, which is pretty straightforward. It just makes the text a little bit shorter, a little bit more concise and to the point. So you can see it took that from three paragraphs to two very short paragraphs. So that's nice. That was the original. And this is the fixed, more concise version. And if we want a summary of some text, we can just click on summary right here and it will give us the summary in this view. And again, this does not replace it, but you can replace or copy that text right here. And if you want to see some key points from that body of text, you can click on key points and it will show you right here what that looks like in bullet point form. So if you want to replace that with the bullets, you can do that like so. And then we have list view, which is pretty interesting. So this also will create some bullet points and sometimes they will be numbered. So right here it is bullet points, but it will basically just do the same thing as the summary, but just put them in bullets. And then we have table. So I did go ahead and put a one, a five and a 50 in front of these paragraphs to see if it's going to be able to create a table using those numbers. So we're going to select this and we're going to go ahead and do table and let's see if it's able to do that. So yes, I did understand and it even used context to say number of videos right here when I put in the numbers. So that's interesting and it does show the description for each of those as well pretty neat also in the notes application if you have a phone call recording or an audio note you will see that we now have a preview right here so a summary in this little player right here and if you go into the full size player over here on the right we now have an option for summaries you can now summarize your voice notes or your phone call recordings and if you click on the emoji picker in the messages application you'll notice that the emojis are now larger and we have our stickers right here as well which appear larger, just like in iOS 18.1. We also have a new focus mode called Reduce Interruptions, and you can see what that looks like here with the glowing glyph icon right there, which looks really nice on the Mac. So this is the same Reduce Interruptions focus mode that we have on iOS and iPadOS 18.1, but you can see that in the settings under Focus and go to Reduce Interruptions, and you can see your settings for that here. And what this focus mode does is it will look for important and time-sensitive notifications or messages and it will push those through the focus mode while ignoring everything that does not seem like it's important or time sensitive. In the photos application, if you go into a photo that might have something in the background that you want to remove, we can now do that with the cleanup tool. So if you go into a photo and go to edit and right up here in the top toolbar, we have a new option for cleanup. So now if we want to remove these objects from the background of this photo, we can just take our mouse and click and we're going to drag around this right here and it will pick up on that and it will go ahead and remove that from the background of this image so it did a pretty good job you can see this weird black right here so we're just going to go ahead and scribble on the black little shadows that it left the little artifacts that it left and see if it can erase that okay so that looks pretty good we'll go ahead and do the same down here for this and you can see a little animation when it detects it and yeah i think that looks pretty good and you can also now use natural language to search for photos in the photos application so if i search for something like a cat laying down it will actually show me photos of my cat laying down. And if you go into the memories section, you can see that we now have a full section for Apple intelligence created memories, which you can do that on iOS and iPadOS 18.1. The iPhone mirroring feature gets a nice update with macOS Sequoia 15.1 because we now have drag and drop support. So you can now drag and drop files from your iPhone to your Mac or from your Mac to your iPhone. So for example, instead of airdropping this file, like I would have in the past, 
last, I can now drag this JPEG into the photos application that I have pulled up here on my iPhone. So check this out. When we go over there, you can see the plus. And if I go ahead and drop it, it will now be there. And I saw it down here under this section right here. So if we go in, you can see right there, it has been saved. And this works the same way for transferring files from your iPhone to your Mac. So if I want to get this photo from my iPhone onto my Mac without AirDrop or anything, I could just drag it right here, put it into my finder and boom, it's there instantly. If we head into our settings and go to desktop and dock, we have a brand new option here for drag windows to menu bar to fill screen. And this does exactly what you think it does. So if you drag a window up to your menu bar, as long as your cursor is right here in the menu bar, you will see the outline right there for your tiling and it will make that window full screen. Now for me, that happens on accident all the time. So me personally, I'm going to be turning this off, but that is now an option for you to have enabled or disabled. It is enabled by default. And you'll notice that the option above that has new wording in 15.1. So it now says drag windows to screen edges to tile. We now have easier access to low power mode with macOS Sequoia 15.1. So this used to be in the system settings, but now it's a lot easier to access because it's in the battery menu when you click on the battery icon up here. And you'll also notice that low power mode turns the battery icon yellow now. In the app store, you now have an option to automatically download and install games and apps to an external disk drive. So this is a new feature. And if you go up here to your settings in the app store, you will see this right here. So this is disabled by default, but if you select the checkbox here, you will be able to choose the disk that you want to download the games or applications to, and they do need to be larger than one gigabyte. And speaking of games, if we go into our settings and go to Game Center, you'll see that this section has been reworked a bit, so we can now customize profile. So this is where you can change your nickname right there on the fly. And also this looks a little bit different. So our nickname does not show up anymore. It just shows right here underneath of profile. And this friends section is new, so it will now show your friends list right here along with a counter of how many you have. We have a friend requests inbox, and you also have the invite friends button right here. And before, when you clicked on invite friends, it would just open up the messages application with an invite, but now you get suggestions based on your contacts and you can invite them very easily now. There's a toggle for sharing your friends list. And also this right here now says show apps before it said show application. So it's just been shortened a little bit. And then below that we have the discoverability section and game activity. And then nearby players is now down at the bottom. So you can see how that compares to macOS Sequoia 15.0 over here on the right. And then you can also send a game center friend invites straight from the contacts application, just like you can on iOS 18.1. I also noticed that when you're searching for something in the spotlight search, quick toggles now show up more frequently and for more applications. So I noticed that Bluetooth now shows up, whereas that didn't show up for me on 15.0. And here's a really small feature I noticed, but if you go into the calculator application and then go into view and then go to math notes, you can see that it just says math notes. It used to say open math notes. And when it comes to the release notes, you'll notice that we do have quite a few resolved issues and also some new features. So we have a new feature for MDM. We have a new feature for screen capture Kit and also a couple of others. So I will leave this linked down in the description below. This update does also patch up some security vulnerabilities. So if you go to Apple's security page here, you can see a list of all of these security patches that we see with this update, which is always nice to see. Now, fortunately, there was nothing that was being actively exploited on macOS 15.0. So that is a good sign. However, you can see that we do still have quite a few patches here, and that's always just a good idea to go ahead and update to keep your Mac as secure as possible. So now should you update to macOS Sequoia 15.1? And I think that if you have any type of Apple Silicon Mac, you should go ahead and update to take advantage of Apple intelligence for the very first time. Now, a lot of the big integrations, a lot of the big Apple intelligence features are still yet to be seen. Those are coming in 15.2 and future versions, but we do have have the new Siri. We do have the writing tools, which work great on the Mac. I actually prefer using those on the Mac versus iOS on the iPhone. And honestly, the performance and the battery life so far has been excellent. I don't have any issues with any type of lag. I've had no issues with any of my third party applications or first party with Final Cut Pro, for example. I've really had no issues whatsoever on 15.1. So that is a good sign. And of course, battery life on my MacBook has been great as well. So I don't really see much downside 
head if you have an Apple Silicon device where you can take advantage of all of these new features. And if you're wondering what to expect next for your Mac, just know that we are going to get another big software update before the end of 2024. And that's going to come in the form of Mac OS Sequoia 15.2. And that is expected at some point in December. But for now, we have our first taste of Apple intelligence with Mac OS Sequoia 15.1. So if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comments below. And if you want to see more Mac OS videos and also iOS videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking that subscribe button down below. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.